Arkansas. I'm your host, Dave Weiner, and we're going to get people checked in really quick here and uh, kind of really put, put some, a lot of stuff going on physically today. So, so please take the time to check in. End of the week type thing, a lot going on. Use your question mark section where you write questions for the staff. Tell us how your week was, and uh, we're going to get started here in just a second. We are right at the top of the hour, and we've got a lot of people out, as we always do on Friday, doing their different uh, things. Oh, I know. A lot of background noise here today. This is unbelievable here today. Usually quiet in here, but today there's a lot of background noise. I guess everybody's talkative. And uh, I feel like I'm going to be... And not enough time to switch venues, so bearing with it. Five million people in here today. But that's the place of being on the road. All right. We're going to quickly go through things that are going on. Houston, Texas this weekend. Tonight, huge, huge op meeting. Being done by Blooming Kemper, Petronovich, and St. Clair. That's in Texas tonight. Tomorrow, red red event, uh, red carpet event tomorrow in Houston, Texas. Please see your uh, website for details if you plan on being there. That's tonight and tomorrow in Houston, Texas. Next weekend, Hawaii. That's right, the Big Island of Hawaii, the Barkuses, Petronovich. Man, I feel like grabbing a plane and hopping over there myself too for a, a day in, in Honolulu land, but you know, you gotta you gotta love it. Also coming up the big event in Boca. Those are the events coming up uh, the next the next ten days. Boca, Hawaii and uh, Houston this weekend. All events are leading towards the uh, the uh, weekend uh, to the Minnesota type thing. So we're 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 pushing forward on that that structure right there. All right. But that's that pushing forward. Please again check in. Um, so Pauline, Stephen, Stephen, uh, Yamin checked in already. Karen, James Richmond, we're missing a lot of people. But it's a typical Friday. We've got networking events. We've got a radio show going on right now, in fact. Um, we just happen to lose a lot of people on Friday morning. All right. We are going to go through the calculator. We are going to open it up and walk through the the uh, process. And uh, we're going to close everything up. And we're going to do a full screen view. We're going to give a 50-year-old, uh, we're going to move the uh, client's age to 50. And we're going to give them a million dollars in a really generous mood. And what we're going to do on the life side, we're going to give them half. We're only going to give them a half million dollars. And we're going to go through the whole edge. So we're going to scroll down here for a second, but we're going to walk through here, all the ups and downs. We're going to walk through, and I want you to pay attention. We're going to go back here. Which one would you prefer to be on, and that is the red line or the blue line? So my question to you right now, very simplistically, if you had to choose between the red line and the blue line, which one would you choose? Now we're going to walk through and teach you the difference of those two. Now the red line is Wall Street. It's got all the things of taxes and fees and all those things. 
So we're going to go all the way back to 1999. You got that million dollars. And you can see right there, there's a million one hundred ninety-five thousand dollars sitting right there. It, it, I'm right there at the end of nineteen and a half percent gain. And as you can see right there, in two thousand, you had your dot com implosion. In two thousand, and you can see we rode it from a million one ninety-five to a million seventy-four. In two thousand one, we lost thirteen percent, fell to nine hundred thirty-four thousand. That was your uh, nine eleven terrorist attack. You know, probably the first time we ever had war brought to our soil, and it won't be the last time. But we did have the you know, we did have the act of terror, and then of course in 2002 after the full blown recession. And money is housed in three areas, folks. It's either in real estate, stock market, or, or guaranteed fixed interest bearing vehicles. And when one sector of the economy fails, money tends to move from sector A to sector B. Well. That's no different right here. In 2001, 2002, the stock market obviously had crashed. And what do we do? Our money moved to the real estate sector. And from 2003 to 2007, we had a complete market physical recovery. And during that, during that time frame, as it, physic as it physically recovered, you can see right there, by the time we got to December 31st of 2007, we pretty much climbed right back to where we were at the end of at the end of 1999, the last year of Bill Clinton. Now, there's two things that are happening there on the red line. One is you you got to pay fees. If your money is being housed in a 401k or being handled by a Wall Street manager, it doesn't matter who the Wall Street manager is. They're charging you to manage those funds. Well, you can see right here, the first year, I made $195,000. Would would I pay three percent? Of course I would. I'd pay three percent to have, you know, to make one hundred ninety-five thousand. I'd pay my thirty thousand. It's a great trade. The problem is, the next eight years it took me to get back to exactly where I was, and I had to pay my Wall Street manager seven more years of fees to get back to exactly where I was in the, in the winter of nineteen ninety-nine. Which means I spent more than my gains. My aggregate average was over $210,000 in fees at that point in time to make $194,000. From 2008, we had the big fall again. That was when we had the, the banking crisis that was real estate bubble and stock market uh, combined. And you can see right there, we lost 38%, fell to 734. And from 2009 to 2014, we recovered. In that 16 years, we had an aggregate average on Wall Street of 3.28 percent. We made 674,000 profit. 515 of it was lost, lost to fees. Depending on your taxes and a 33 percent tax bracket, we had another erosion of another 385,000, which left us a spendable amount of money of 772,000. Now, on the right side, I started with half. I didn't start with a million dollars. I started with five hundred thousand. Now my five hundred thousand was put into a life insurance contract. And why did I start with half? Because to move the money from the red line to the blue line, I had to pay tax and penalty. I gave my client a guarantee that they would get a part of the ups without none of the downs. So I gave them a thirteen percent up with a zero percent risk factor. And as you can see right here. At the end of that time frame, I grew to a million five hundred nineteen thousand. Well, it was still a life insurance contract, and even though I had an aggregate average of seven point two, I still had cost of one hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars inside that insurance contract over that sixteen years, which brought my return down to six point two six percent. But I get to access that money with no taxation. So you can see right here. 772 net versus a million 320. I think I'm looking pretty good for starting with half the amount of money, but I'm not done yet. Over here, on the red line saver, if you die too soon, you only get your account value less your taxes. On my side, I got a million 850 going to my widow, tax free, death benefit. On the left hand side, if I become ill, I might have access to my account value. I might not. It depends on how serious the illness is and whether or not I severed my ties with the firm. On the right-hand side, 
my family got access to a million dollars up front. No, with no again, an income tax free to be able to create guaranteed income. If I live too long, due to market risk fees, taxes, I can't, I can't even project the income. But on my side, I've got a projected income over three million dollars in distributions from the age of seventy to age eighty-five. If I need to have access to money. I may have access, may not, but you've got penalties and taxes. I have easy access, no penalties, no tax. So we continue down here. In summary, on the red line, you've got 100% of your money at risk. On my side, there is no market risk. Fees, they're excessive. Most are undisclosed. Ours, every penny is disclosed line by line. Taxes. You're in, you're in tax forever asset, 401Ks, 403Bs, IRAs, you're in a tax forever asset. Ours, so by our Internal Revenue Code 72E, 101, 7702, and 7702A, it's a tax never asset. Access to your funds. You've got limited access, and you've got penalties for 59 half. We are easy access. Your partner, massively in debt, spends no responsible, total control. Timers can change the rules any time. Us, we're financially sound, fiscally responsible, contractually obligated. Your cost, you pay all the costs. You pay the fees, penalties, taxes, and you take all the risks. On the right-hand side, you have zero net cost. You may recoup any and all costs, fees, penalties, etc. Your financial future, kind of nerve, you know, it's, it's, it's nerve-wracking. You know, ours got really good peace of mind. As you scroll down, you get a lot of issues. And I'm going to come back to this last one here, and I'm going to scroll back up. Because a lot of people would then say to, say to me, well, Dave, that's great if you're in the stock market. But you know what? I just don't believe in the stock market right now. OK. What do you believe in? Well, I believe in right now real estate. And I gotta admit you, real estate's always done better. So let's let's take a look how real estate would have done. So I'm gonna change my allocation from the S and P five hundred and we're gonna go to Dow Jones Real Estate ten, which is a commercial real estate index, not residential. And go back the last sixteen years, give you the same five hundred thousand. And how does that blue line look when you put it into into that buy or sell the buildings operating off that index. And you can see right there in that bubble at the end of the time for million versus one point six million. An aggregate return on my money of ten point four two percent. And I started with five hundred thousand not a million. And I still beat it penny to penny. I minus off my insurance cost. That didn't change. And you can see right there my tax free. And we're going to scroll down here. What's my net? I got 2.1 million to 772. I've got 272 percent more money. But Dave, I don't believe in real estate. Okay, what do you believe in? I want to be in gold. We got that also. We've got a 14 percent cap, no downside. Again, no taxation on the spending transfer and, and accumulation of assets. And again, you can see right there, 186% more. You can even put a third, a third, and a third. Or you can go 10% stock, 80% real estate, 10% gold. you got choices. The bottom line is when you go back to the red line, blue line, which one do you prefer, the blue line or the red line? And remember, we started with half. Half of what they had because I had to pay tax and penalty to physically move you out of that vehicle. So now we're going to talk about the obstacles. You've got some obstacles. You've got three. Obstacle number one, tax. I think it's the biggest obstacle you face. Why? Why is it the biggest obstacle? Because your government is massively in debt. If 
just it just is. When you are 18 trillion in the hole, and that's the T word, it's got to come from someplace. You got to go back historically, and you got to look back at the history. The first law passed was back in 1974, and that was ERISA. That stood for the Employee Retirement Security Act of 74, went to effect January 1st, 1975. Now, this was a law that was originally passed to protect you from your employers taking advantage of your uh, pension, making their penalties so they didn't raid the pension fund. Well, there was a pure paragraph that said you can only control your own maximum benefit supplemental savings plan on tax deferred base this law to the IRA. Over the next decade, every occupation got their own with TSA, whether it be the IRA, whether it be the 401k plan, everybody has a version. State workers, the first comp. And as those, as those programs were put together, some didn't. One of them had one thing in common. It gave you a tax break. And every seat and encouraged you to put money in these plans, and they called tax deferment the greatest thing for sliced bread. They said, you can grow money, not pay taxes now, and when you spend the money later, you might be in a lower tax bracket. That's what, this, that's what they said, be in a lower tax bracket. And folks, that, that's crazy. That's absolutely insane. Why? Why is that insane? Because you should have your home paid for by the time you retire. That deduction's gone. Your kids are grown up. That deduction's gone. What do you have left in deduction? And if you're taking out from your retirement the same income streams that you took out as a worker, and it's being taxed as ordinary income, your savings being taxed as ordinary income, well, then guess what? You're not in a lower tax bracket. Now are you? And the thing that we counted on the most during the course of our lifetime, which was pensions, well, they've become a footnote in history. They belong to the ages. Very few occupations have a guaranteed source of income. Now, can the government hijack your savings? Well, if you read the book, The Power of Zero, by David McKnight, And if you did the time and, and read that book, you know from the Congressional Budget Office, if you're in a 25% tax bracket, they stated, the Congre not Dave Weiner, not you, the Congressional Budget Office stated that you will see your tax bracket go to 63%. So if you've got $100,000 of money in savings, instead of having $25,000 go back to Uncle Sam, how about 63%? And that is before state taxes. Taxation is a legal way to steal your retirement nest egg. Now, can you afford that to happen? Does that make any plausible sense to you? I, I find that to be highly discouraging to think that that could physically happen to you. This would be bad. What if taxes do skyrocket? You've got no control of it. If you go back to the end of, the, end of World War II, 1945, the highest marginal tax rate at that time in the country was 94%. And at least you had write-offs back then. During the 70s, before Reagan, we had marginal rates around 70%, the highest position. And speaking around Reagan, during the late 40s, before he, became, before he became governor of California, before he entered his life of politics, when he was president of the Screen Actors Guild, he made two movies a year. He made about $100,000 per picture. And back then, you could earn about 200000 before the break, before all your tax breaks were done. Why did he only work six months of the year and make only two movies a year? Why is that? Because it made no sense to make any more money for him. In other words, at 94%, everything over 200000 would have basically gone to, gone to the federal government and the rest would have gone to the state of California. So he worked six months and took six months off. 
in, 19, in the 1980s, you had three tax codes passed, TEFRA, DEFRA, and TAMRA. During the tax reform era of the 1980s, we lowered the tax brackets in this country. We lowered it completely to around 28%. What was the give me? The give me was simple. We lowered the brackets, but we took away most of the deductions. And why were there so many deductions? Well, you have to go back historically, and you've got to understand the 1970s were, was a crisis in this country. Most people don't, most people don't remember the, the huge crisis, the, you know, the energy crisis and the oil lines and inflation. You know, double digit and inflation was the norm in this country. Well, you know what? We had to get people to spend money. Our economy is based on the buying and selling of goods in this country. And in the mid-1970s, we stopped spending money. We had wage freezes during the Nixon administration. We had, we, had, we had to actually freeze the price of milk and gasoline and sugar. And we had to get you spending money. How did we get you to spend money? We gave you write-offs. We told you to write off your credit card interest rates. We told you if you want to buy a big appliance, we, we trained you to go into debt. We, get, we turned a nation that never did this before into a nation of debtors. You became a payment itis world. This car is only going to cost you $105 a month, but you get to write it off also. Let Uncle Sam pay for a portion of your car. Let Uncle Sam help you pay for your washer and dryer. All those write-offs went by the wayside with tax reform. Do you realize that, that income and productivity have gone up hand in hand from every president, from George Washington all the way to Ronald Reagan? From the first U.S. president all the way to 1980, whenever productivity went up, our incomes went up. And from 1980 till today, productivity has gone up, but incomes have died. Back then, the average household income Individual is twenty-five thousand. Today, the average household income was forty-three thousand in this country. Back then, in the nineteen seventies, you could have a job as a lifeguard and pay for a college education. Today, a student is in the national debt. Kid comes out of college today. There's a fifty percent shot he's not going to find a job in his or her advocation. Today, households are living on credit card debt. Beyond anything they can comprehend, the average household has over 25000 on their plate. Another nightmare consideration. And yet the biggest obstacle to their savings is the federal government themselves. The government can confiscate and steal their savings by raising taxes. And will they? All you got to do is ask yourself the question, will taxes go up? Well, the government's already told you it will. And if you agree it will, why in the world would you ever defer a tax bill to a later date if you know it's going to take more later? That's just plain stupid. If that was the only obstacle, you could stop right there. But it's not the only obstacle. The next obstacle is risk. Markets go up, markets go down. Come on, folks. It doesn't have to be that way anymore. There are strategies in the world that allow you to get the gains without the losses. And, and if you learn that they exist, if you learn that they exist, why in the world, why in the world would you ever, ever, ever put your money in harm's way again? That's just blatantly insane. Well, Dave, you can't get all the market gains. Well, no, that's not that's not factual no more. There are strategies that have no cap. You have no reason whatsoever to go roll the dice. We tell people not to go in the casino. Why in the world would you play the casino of Wall Street? The casino of gold. The casino. It's just crazy. 
And I can give you a gazillion analogies, but the bottom line is this, why? Why would you take any risk whatsoever? And this is not variable life insurance. That takes risk. This isn't going to punch your visor or a person taking risk. Why would you ever take, take things? Why? Make any sense? Does it make any sense to take risk? Can anybody make the argument why to make you take risk ever again? If you know how to get the gains without risking your principal, why would you ever take risk? Now, to Dana Gibson's comments, I've sat down with many CPAs. And to Dana, this is for you. Roth is an amazing thing, and it's a choice. But why would a CPA choose life insurance over a Roth? Why would a CPA choose life insurance over a Roth? And I know the answer. Nobody would choose a Roth over life insurance if they understood their choices. So let's walk through choices. Choice number one, they can do nothing. Let's just say you're sitting here today on the call and you got your money right now at Edward D. Jones. Okay. So number one is a choice. Your money's under management at Edward D. Jones. You got an advisor that's advising you. You've got your money mixtured in some you know, mutual funds or got your money in some stocks and some income oriented growth things, maybe some indexing funds, whatever. So you've got your money out there. You've not dealt with two key issues with that broker. See, he's only focused on accumulation. Money is three phases. Accumulation, spending, yes, you want to spend it. What's the point of accumulating if you don't spend it? And last but not least, transferring that asset. You can do nothing and you do not know how much you can spend. You can guess you don't know how much you can spend that might wipe it out. You could spend too much and you wipe out your savings. Or spend too little. And what was the point? No existence. And you never dealt with the tax status. And you're paying for that advice. And we've proven in other classes on the cost of fees, you will spend more with them than you'll ever spend with us. In fact, you'll spend probably anywhere from 200 to 400% more in fees in your lifetime. Proven, kind of scary, but we did that the other day. We showed 400,000 in fees in the last 10 years and versus $88,000 in cost of insurance contracts. So, but that's not, right now it's not about the fees. It is about doing nothing. Keeping your money at risk and, 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 not, and not dealing with that tax status. Choice number two, they can go to an insurance company and they can buy a fixed, not a variable, a fixed annuity. The whole reason of buying that annuity is to get a guaranteed income. That's it. So I had an accountant who had quarter million dollars, 250000 and if he went and bought an IRA rollover, he would have about $18,000 of income at the age of 70, guaranteed as long as he and his wife lived. He still did not deal with the tax status on choice number two. 
In other words, every distribution, no matter the fact, no matter what, it was guaranteed income, but every distribution was taxable. Choice number three, he could do a Roth conversion. That's what you were talking about in the book, The Power of Zero, Dana. A Roth conversion means you paid the tax. The income is still the same. We used other, we used other assets to pay it. You still got the 18000 of guaranteed income, but now every distribution is tax-free. The fourth choice, my favorite, pay the tax, enjoy the income, get the tax back. Now, when I did that with CPA, the certified public accountant sat there and he goes, huh? He knew about the Roth conversion. He goes, what do you mean pay the tax and get the tax back? We traded a 250,000 taxable asset for a $556,000 non-taxable asset. This is the new type of life insurance, not the old stuff. This was an index UL. Three things could happen. Thing number one client could die. My widow got 556000 in this example at the age of 70. She bought an annuity with it, and she got 36000 of guaranteed income. Question number one, is 556 bigger than 250000 Yes, it is. My client, family, got their tax money back. My client could get sick. This is the new type of life insurance. It releases the death benefit up front with no death. In this particular case, that particular product, we released 418000 up front when he got ill. We bought an annuity, generated 31000 of guaranteed income until both were gone. Again, is 418 bigger than 250? Yes, recovered tax. What if at the age of 70, not dead and not sick? Shame on that client for not, not passing on in five years or getting sick. Guess what? 18,000, same as the annuity, projected tax-free income. Not guaranteed, projected. But here's the good news. Sooner or later, no one lives forever. And when that happens, we we finish and conclude the we conclude the deal. So now, if we're sitting here today, we've gone in the calculator. We talk about the obstacle. And the obstacle, the big time obstacle of taxes, we talked about the obstacle of risk. And we've dived in and delved into fees. The last obstacle is a human factor. And it's broken into two areas. And it's probably the biggest stuff that we do. At least in my opinion, it's the biggest stuff we do. The human factor is you. There's two huge obstacles on the human factor. One. We do not eat right. We don't exercise right. I mean, we, we got issues, which means we have health issues. In the United States last year, the average age of death was 74 for a male, age 80 for a female. Almost two-thirds of all the bankruptcies in this country were medical-related. The average age of a medical capacitation bankrupt, according to Harvard Law, was 44 years of age. Don't blame health insurance. 78% had adequate health coverage. The average age of a critical illness, which includes heart attacks, 
strokes in cancer. Average age of death, or 84% died of those three illnesses. Average age of a claim, 43 years of age. 52% of all the claims for a critical illness in the United States last year was between 41 and 50 years of age. You all got bills. You got house payments. You got car notes. And you got this obstacle called funding your retirement. So I'm going to go back and ask the question. If your income stopped tomorrow, what's your current plan? I'm going to tell you what our plan for our clients is. Let's pay off their debt. Let's retire their debt the day they get sick. Let's release that life money up front. And, not done yet, let's release enough money to buy an annuity that replaces that person's income 100%. 30 days later. The day they got sick, I replaced their income for life. And if they succumb, which means die, their widow gets their income. Not for two years or three years. That person's not there, but we've got 100% of their income on the table for life. Wall Street doesn't do that. Money managers don't do that. The biggest obstacle is a human obstacle. And when you can sit there and, and, and put the income on the table in the event of them becoming sick or ill in today's modern-day program, they don't have that. This is not Band-Aid insurance from Colonial. It's not a Band-Aid from AFLAC. This is talked about these. We have the ability to release between 5 and $6 million the day someone gets sick with no death. Enough money to pay off the debt to a small business owner. I said a day, enough money to be released. This is called income continuation. There's two forms of it. I do business continuation planning and I do household and I do household continuation planning, HCP. If you're a business owner, what causes businesses to go you know, eight out of ten businesses go down for the count, right? That doesn't change. Business owners have the most stress in the in, in the entire world. You know, they borrow money from banks. They quit their business, they have employees that count on them. And 77% of the assets from a small business owner are in their company. I want you to visualize that business owner gets sick tomorrow. They get sick. They're not there. 99% of small business owners in this country have most of what they do in their head. And, and that company's not functioning. That guy's gone. That company is in deep, deep trouble. But the problem is, most people, and this is a fact, 7 out of 10, 70 percent, that get sick before 65 years of age, unfortunately, don't end up in a box. The bank doesn't care. They prefer them in a box because they had them buy life insurance to pay off the debts in case they got sick from their loans. Well, there are three entities that got to be protected in a company. One is the business owner themselves. We need enough money released day one to cover the overhead. The overhead for at least 12 to 18 months. If their business has $50,000 a month in bills, includes the money he takes out of his business to pay his personal bills, we gotta, we got to cover that. So that his household doesn't go down for the count. You add that up right there, that's like $900,000 up front. Let's, let's get them a check for $900,000. let us get them some money up front to hire one or two people to replace what he or she was doing in that company. It means I need another couple hundred thousand in front money to, to pay for a couple of employees. My spouse needs time. Time to see if you're going to go back to work or not go back to work. We need money to, to hold that company together. And by having the overhead, the employees aren't let go, 
and I want enough money released to pay off all the debts. It's easier to sell a company if we have to sell it debt free than it is with a debt position. And folks, that's a big deal. Debt business continuation planning. Household continuation planning, pretty simple. Same thing. We're going to replace the income, we're going to pay off the debts, and we're going to replace the income. And we're going to make sure any promises we made to our kids or children from the standpoint of college funding or now, that money's there released the day my client gets sick. So whether it's a business continuation plan or a household continuation plan, those things are in place. That's a big deal. That's the human factor. The second part of the human factor, unfortunately, which is also you, is called procrastination or you're not saving enough. That's the reality, procrastination. So again, we go back to our calculator. And we have it in our calculator. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go to the end here. Back into my red, into my better way to save, and it's right here at the very bottom. You just got to open it up. The fourth wealth killer is probably the most scariest one. To have five thousand a month income, made seventy, in a three point two eight percent stock market, two and a half percent fees taxable. If you're twenty five years of age, you got to save fourteen hundred a month. 35, 1900 a month, 45, 2700 a month, 55 years of age, 4,550 a month, 60 years of age, 7,000 a month. By using the LSW numbers, showing a 1.5% fee, 8.2% rate of return, tax free, 190 versus 1400. A 35 year old, 380 a month versus 1900 a month, 800 versus 2700, 1950 versus 4,550. But let's face it. How many 45-year-olds are putting away 800 bucks a month? The biggest obstacle is you. To have a million dollars at age 70, just to have a million dollars in your 45 years of age in a Wall Street deal, you've got to put away over three grand a month. Over here, only, only 1,300. If you're 55 years of age, you want a million by the time you're 70, 5,000 versus 3,000. Procrastination is the last deal breaker. Same or more, folks. We have to get them, put them in business, and get them to where they physically need to be. So, with that said, any questions this morning? Dana, I hope that answered your question regarding why the gentleman that wrote the book said he liked the Roth. I just don't think he understood the life choice and got it where he got all the money back. Um, a lot of people here today, so I'm going to work my way around the room. Any questions? A lot of our key go-to people, they're not here today because, uh, well, they are they're got a radio show going on. we got a networking event going on in San Diego, which we do every Friday morning. But I'm going to go to Darren Delaney in uh, Minnesota. Darren, how are you this morning? Darren, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So, Darren, do you have any questions, do you have any questions or comments on what you've gone through this morning? Um, you know, I don't have any questions. I just, uh, I was actually typing, can you send a copy of this out uh, to my team? Because if you explain something logically, like you're doing it, and there's really no, there's no way they can say no to it because it, it makes, you know, sense. And they're actually selling themselves then because they I see it in front of their eyes of, they'd be doing it the way, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. um, this is the presentation. I'm watching the questions and comments from the room here. All right, we're going to go to Annette Braswell in North Carolina. Good morning, Annette. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. So how, how did this help you a little bit today? Well, I mean, gosh, I was trying to make a million notes here, but, <laughs> I mean, you put it so eloquently. Um, I think what is a wonderful thing for me to try to get under my belt is the progression of explaining how here's what you're going to get, here's, here's what your options are. So you start with the doing nothing, what's going to happen, 
uh, if you buy this, here's what's going to happen. If you do a Roth conversion, here's what's going to happen. And then you take that information and you move on into what happens if you die, what happens if you get sick, what happens if you live. Because, now, look uh, if, now, look at, now look at your calculator, Annette. Huh? There's your cheat sheet. There's your cheat sheet right there on your calculator. It's there. Uh, All you got to do is open it. Illustration results. I like that. Do, do nothing. Purchase mm -hmm. an annuity. Do a Roth conversion. Or trade for a tax, for, a, a tax forever asset for a tax never asset. It's right there. All you got to do is follow, follow okay. along. Well, I would still love to have you on video doing this so that I can market it and put it on little CDs and send it to business owners. And <laughs> You're just so eloquent at doing it. I would, have to, I would stumble over myself until uh, I, till I get this down pat. But this is um, super, but you're, but you're getting, super but you're getting, But you're getting better in the field this week, haven't you? Yes, definitely. I was late getting on the call today because I was uh, asking somebody about their retirement at the tannin bed. <laughs> Uh, and she and she may be, and I also talked to her about being a recruit too. So she's um, she's a little excited today. I I love that because folks, see, in in ten days, if you follow our system with the same or more, that's eighteen eight, and that that's eighteen hundred leads in ten days. That ends wow. the processing issues. I sat there doing the math yesterday on the call. It really is yes. 1,800 leads. If we do it right, it's 1,800 leads in 10 days of work. Ooh, that's crazy. Three, that's doing same or more clothes, putting them in business, three wide, three deep, nine times 200. That's how many contacts we have in our, our Facebook and our phones. Nine times 200 is 1,800. That's 45,000 in production in 10 days. Wow. Well, let me ask you a question real quick while I got you on the phone. Um, I just talked yep. to another young guy who works at Hartford, so he's uh, under contract uh, or he's captive. Um, and he really liked what I had to show him, but it didn't quite reel him in because he gets a salary there. How can I overcome his objection to going to a commission-based uh, opportunity that's really huge because he has no opportunity there. He's making $40,000, and he's looking for, for growth, and they still have yet to, I'm you know, give you move him up the ladder. I'm going I'm to give you the answer. Number, okay. number one, are you really going to put your clients in harm's way because some company that's a, a Wall Street-based company gives you a guaranteed income each week? Does your clients mean not that much to you? Or... No. Or... Are you willing to take a chance for your clients and, and, and be way more remunerated for yourself? If you're, if, you're, if you're willing to pay the price and do what we tell you step by step, we're going to put you in a $50,000 a month category of production. Now, the reality is that a 60% payout, that's you know, pretty much right below our VP level, that's mm -hmm. a $30,000 a month income. He's making 40 a year. Within two months, he's replaced a year's wage. God bless America. God bless America. <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> well, I will definitely give him a call back. We're going to be talking to him. And since he didn't take this opportunity yet, I know his mother has a 401K, so we're going to have to sit down and talk with her. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the awesome information. Let's see here. I'm going to go to Stephen Adams in Texas. Where are you, Stephen? I saw your notes, so we're going to go to you. Your mic is open, Mr. Adams. Yes, it is. How are you doing, David, on this glorious Friday? It's a great Friday, isn't it? I'm in a Starbucks Indeed. in the middle of the Midwest, and it's packed with a good deal of people. <laughs> but my, my question to you is, what resonated with you here today? What, what, what triggered your request and everything else just now? It's, it's getting, getting to, the, to the point where you can actually bring the, the, the big picture of uh, the accumulation of, of not so much the fees and the taxes into... Um, a, a, a narrow down scope of, of concentration that, that they can see without getting too spread out and I don't get too spread out trying to explain um, if I can show them show them uh, and let them visualize uh, where their money's going and where it can go um, that that is gold um, I can explain it all day long uh, without being able to show them and it, it probably did doesn't mean near as much as being able to show them in, in the actual so I'm going to I'm go back. To, I'm going to go back to the million dollar question I asked you before, but I'll ask you again. Knowing what you know now and what you're getting educated on, 
how much production do you think you should be doing on a weekly basis, bare bones minimum? Do you think the thousand hour club, or do you think you can do more? I, I think I can do more. It's it, it, it's all it's all the numbers are getting in front of people. It's, you know, acti activity is everything, and uh, oftentimes we're our own worst enemy on that. And now, uh, do you now, do you do you understand the power of same or more yet? Absolutely. Do you understand three wide, three deep equals nine, right? Yeah. Nine people times 400 bucks, 100 hours a week, right? You realize in 10 to 30 days, you were involved in over $45,000 in production. That's insane. And you picked up 1,800 leads. Isn't that better than all the internet leads in the world or direct mail leads in the world, a friend taking a friend to a friend and replacing 401k contributions? Okay, so na na now we're talking about mastering the recruiting uh, process as well and not, not just doing the, uh, mastering the presentation. Remember, Stephen, at the end of, at the end of, the, at the end of your thing, at the very end, and I, the person says they want to do the same or more, you got a choice, get referrals, or put them in the business. Remember we want to put them in the business? Yep. You put them in the business and you collect their 200 contacts. They're already a client. They're a $400 a month client, give or take a penny. Is that enough money being saved? Let's say no. No, where's no. they need to be doing it. They're not saving enough, right? Correct. How are, how are you going to get them where they're putting away 3000 plus a month? And the answer is by you sharing, by you doing revenue sharing. I know you could just take the referrals and write the business and never give a dime to a client. I'm asking you to share your money, share your time, help that person get to where they need to be. You do that by you giving the law of reciprocity comes back to you a hundredfold. By you willing to share your money and your time and your education, that's for the sake of just making a sale. But more importantly, by you sharing that, then guess what? They're filling your coffers from all the people you could ever humanly imagine to see. Does that make any sense? Oh, absolutely. It, it, that's, um, that, that's a great perspective on that. Yeah, and, and once you get that, once you understand that part right there, as you, put, as you get to the end and put people into the deal, then game over for you, sir. Within 10 to 30 days, same as Annette and everybody else, if you follow that process, you're going to have thousands of people to see, and you'll never have enough time to see them all. You'll be buried in activity. And, and that's the beauty of our system. You're not chasing fresh dollars. You're only working with money being spent already being consumed by Wall Street. In other words, can can we do better can we do better for them? Answer your question. Can we do better for that person? Yeah. Is their four hundred is their four hundred dollars better with us than with that money manager? No question. There's no question. Taxes, risk, fees. I think we shine beyond anything they could ever humanly comprehend. So then the question is, they got the human factor going on still. Just because you moved that $400 out of harm's way and did better for the 400 bucks, we still have not solved their riddle how they're going to have a decent retirement. And the only way they're going to have a decent retirement is if you help them increase their income. You do that, that last piece. It's like being at a, you know, being at a, for example, um, church, and you got some people that, that are trying to, you know, are trying to recover from an illness. You know, the person has cancer, and there's treatment to get that person better. Would you, would you not encourage them to get better, take the treatment? Absolutely. Yep. What if the person ha had a uh, addiction? God forbid, gambling addiction or drinking addiction or something like that. Wouldn't, wouldn't you, as a group, encourage them to do things to get better? Well, 
these people are sick. They're sick because they've been encouraged their entire life to spend their entire paycheck. They've got what's called paycheck-itis, payment-itis. So we know we can't change it. It's already been committed for the next 20, 30 years to bills. So what do we have to do? We have a choice. We could just take forget about them and, and, and they become a, a, a tragedy on our on, that, that came across our bow. Or we can share our money with them and teach them, help us teach others not to make the same mistakes. That's what this is all about, Stephen. That's that. Once you got that down, science, then the then, then the law of reciprocity comes back, comes back tenfold for you, doesn't it? Yep. That's where we're at, sir. And 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 that's the difference. We teach people over and over again how to become better savers, better household continuation planning, and we will take finish top of the top of the hour. i got a last couple of questions and comments that are coming in. And uh, Darren's asking a question. Darren, you're still open. So what, 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 what do you want me to show on the calculator, sir? Darren, you, you are still open. Oh, I, I, was saying, I was just saying to show it on the calculator quick because some people have first seen a calculator for the first time this time and they don't even know that you can show agent uh, commissions on that same calculator as a client presentation. You can show them the comp you've got your compensation grids in there. You can show them compensation absolutely. And it and it does get kind of crazy because if you if you go back here and you get that person to the first level, which is which is a, a business vice president, getting it up there all the way to the top. Okay, so like that, BBP, you get that person to do a thousand bucks a week. And if they're just doing one a week. You know, thousand dollars a week in production. They're making four hundred thousand dollars a year. And Darren, that's a great income, isn't it? That's a fantastic income. And if they help, in the course of their operation, ten people get the BVP. They're doing one a week. They're now making eight sixty-four a year, aren't they? Right. Is that a, is that a successful living? If you got ten people doing a thousand. That it is. And if those 10 people get their 10, which is 100 more, and they're doing their one a week, that person's making 2.5 million a year. And of course, they moved up the ladder. So I'll just, I'll just bounce it up to executive national vice president. What's the income right there, Darren? Uh, 9.6 million. Can you pay for an exit? I think so. Do you think they're going to share in the proceeds from the company when we sell it? Is that, the, is that a magic number right there? Yeah, I'd say. Is there enough Is there enough 401k money to be had? Remember, folks, there's 88 million people in this country that have a 401k type plan. LIMRA, and that's the, that's the research arm of the insurance industry, projects right now the index universal life market is going to grow to $100 billion a year. $100 billion a year in premiums. And let's not forget there's 149 million policies on the books that's the old type. That's very replaceable. No, your, your opportunity is overwhelming out there. And it's up to you whether or not you take advantage of it. So with that said, I'm going to go over here. The last thing I'm going to put here, I don't know, Robert, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure of the question. Text me that, because I'll, I'll lose the questions here, but text me that question and see if we can figure out what you're at, exactly asking there. You're asking for monthly contributions for ongoing annuity or life policy with a lump sum deposit. I'm, I'm pretty sure we can, but I just need to know what you, exactly what you're looking for. So with that said, it's one minute on top of the hour. I hope we've been a little bit of help for you today. We're going into the weekend. I like weekend weekend warriors. Um, I'm looking forward to the big weekend myself. So with that said, it's one minute on top of the hour. Make it a great blessed weekend. And remember one thing. 
All you can do is all you can do, but all you can do is enough. With that said, thank you. Have a great weekend. Bye.